meeting to order for the Long Term Building Committee. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, to the Republic, Republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation, one God, invisible, liberty, and justice for all. All right. So, welcome, members. Today is. Uh, oh, microphone, sorry. It's uh, January 25th. This is a meeting of the Long-Term Building Committee. This meeting is being recorded. Um, so, first order of business, Rose, do we have an agenda for this evening, Tim? Thank you. Sorry about that. Um, we'd like to approve the minutes of December 14th. And uh, can I get a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of December 14th. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? That's unanimous. So, uh, next is we have a uh, review of the old high school status and recommendations. And then we'll have next steps and then topics, any other topics, and then we'll join. Um, so, I do believe that it was uh, Mr. Mark that uh, Mark wanted to uh, address uh, us about this. Am I, am I right about a, a proposed, a possible proposed plan? Is that? I, I hadn't talked to Mark. No, I met with um, John Perry and David Lalima. Okay. Um, they were thinking of coming tonight, but they were still looking at different options for the building. Okay. So I don't have anything specific. Okay. So, um, I mean, we, we pretty much agreed that it's, if at all possible, this is something that we, um, as a committee, if at all possible, if we can get the funding and we can come up with a, a good plan that we would be in a much better position as a town if we were able to save this property rather than just divest ourselves of it. And even talking about the selling of it, it may take years. Uh, you know the market we can see the market's already going trending down uh, you know we, at best by the time we were done we might see five six million maybe seven or eight at most and that would be the end of it and then we would not have this property we wouldn't be able to build the fields we you know we wouldn't have the fields to use utilize i should say we would have to build new fields so um i did prepare uh you know a, a draft atm non-binding article um, to bring to town meeting to see if their the town is actually interested in saving this building, and uh, this is just a draft. That's so, a, a you know a, um, I expect that you know if, if you feel that we missed anything on this uh, on the draft uh, of the article, then we can go through that first and, and tweak that. Uh, if, the, um, if not. The explanation was just, I, I mean, I did this quickly, maybe a half hour, I, I, I wrote this. Um, I've since ed even edited some of this and added some things to it, uh, mentioning the fact that if we don't, if we lose the fields and we have to build new ones for the, for the, for the students and whatnot. Um, so I wish I could have, if I had all your emails, I would have shared the document with you um, on Google. Uh, um, let me just pull it up. So, has everyone had a chance to look at this, the the, the proposed article and uh, explanation? And anyone have any input? So, you're proposing that this would be um, uh, at the annual town meeting. Yes. Okay. Yep. Town meeting on the ballot. This would be the town meeting. This would be for town meeting, and then um, it would have to be if if the town meeting overwhelmingly supports it, then we would go forward with a ballot initiative, and we may have to have a special if, if the budget can't hold it, hold this for a year, but <coughs> we may not, especially if we're able to get an override passed. Um, uh, however, uh, you know either way. Um, we're going to need time to, uh, if we end up disposing it either way, we're going to we're going to need the time to you know get that 
that through. So I, I was contacted by uh, Mark Schmid about uh, something I believe the planning board and others were uh, thinking about, um, and, but I don't know. Did we lose Mark? I don't know. Mark like seems gone. to have been dropped. Yeah. Is Mark still here? I don't see him here. Yeah. Okay. Um, actually, having it at the um, annual town meeting is um, much more compelling because there, at least, you could, it's open for discussion. Yes. So Rather people will have an ballot and that's one, you know, it's a one dimensional. People just say, no, I'm not paying for this. Right. And, and, right. You know, at, least it, at least it gives the opportunity to open up discussion and have uh, a two way dialogue, anyway, yeah. about it versus and a one dimensional. To, to, so they understand the pros and cons. You know, right. it's like, right. okay, pro, if we do this, we can centrally locate everything. We don't have to displace anybody. We don't have to build new fields right, right away. We don't right. have to do a lot of things that. Right. There's a lot of things that could be phased in. Yeah. And, 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 and we don't displace all the people right. in these buildings while the construction is going on or the reconstruction of these buildings is going on, which is that's what we need. Um, so con is it's going to cost money. I mean, right. uh, of every, anything, every the con is that it's going to cost money and the town's people are going to have to come up with it. Right. Is, are they willing to make that investment or not? And that's kind of what this is geared toward. Um, and, you know, I obviously strongly support that we, you know, should use this to, and we should really centrally locate our, our our offices and also create a community center out of this, where where people can really, you know, come together for events, for different things, uh, for education, for functions, to, to to rent out the kitchen and have right. fundraisers for local charities in town and even just parties and things for yeah, people who live in Brian. town. Brian? Yep. There you Brian. are. Yeah, I apologize. That's okay. This, this has never happened, but my computer froze and uh, couldn't get the thing. You know, I took out my hammer and I tried to smash it. <laughs> yeah, uh, I see you missed. <laughs> yeah, I missed, but I got it back on. And so the okay. last thing I heard you say was approval of the meet, meeting minutes in December, yep. which I never did get a copy of, so I couldn't approve them anyway. Okay. Well, we had uh, uh, um, we well we approved those anyhow. But did we have enough votes for that? <coughs> if we did that, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, three one. Okay. So um, so what we're discussing is the disposition of the high school. Obviously, that's and you had uh, reached out to me saying that you know the planning board or whatever it may have. Uh, seen some proposals that we were unaware of or that um, they may be working on something. Is that true, Tom? No. Uh, Mark? Me? Mark. I mean Mark. <laughs> oh, God, Tom. Uh, uh, Mark, I'm so uh, It's been a long day. I rushed you from the Cape. Yeah, no, that's okay. Uh, no, what, what I said was that the, the uh, Town planner um, has made the planning board aware that um, there's a program called the, uh, the the community one stop for growth, mm -hmm. and you can apply for grants. And there are certain um, uh, categories of grants. Let's put it that way that we we that the town can apply for, and uh, uh, they're going ahead with uh, grant applications on. A couple of other uh, areas, but there is a uh, something called the underutilized properties program, and under that program, if we apply for it, we could get a grant that would be uh, used to. It's used to engage the services of architects, engineers, um, other consultants to. Do a building assessment, develop, it, which I know we've already done, but it also goes further. You can use it to develop the design and construction documents 
um, for a capital improvement project. And uh, so the thought, well, one thought was uh, it may be of use depending on what direction we go. If, you know, if, if the decision is to pursue the reuse, the adaptive reuse of the old high school building, we may want to take, even though I know we've had a preliminary studies by UTL architects, we may want to go further once we know more precisely what the program for the building is, meaning what uses the town feels would be the best use for that building. We could use that money. So <clears throat> that's what I was uh, calling your attention to. And, and they're asking for expression of interest due by, I think, uh, February 3rd. And it's a very short form. Um, and the whole process, if you get, if they give you the go ahead, then you submit a final application and they review it and then they notify you. And the whole thing would take, before you even, if you were so fortunate to be successful, you wouldn't get any money, I don't think, until uh, the end of the year, the earliest. Okay. Mark, are there certain uh, types of uses that are allowed under these grants? I mean, should we be targeting a, a particular type of purpose? Do you know? Well, yeah, well, I mean, that's where I think if, the, um, if the building were had or incorporated a number of community oriented uses and senior housing uh, those probably carry more weight than uh, municipal offices for example but um, but I think we've been talking about the possibility of a true um, mixed use building which would have municipal, the possibility that is, of municipal offices and a senior center, a library for instance, and uh, the Westport Cultural Center has, has a great interest in using the auditorium and some of the spaces there for programs that they, that they want to have, yep. including recreation department. Okay. Anything further? I just, I just want to say that the $30 million estimate for reuse of that building does not include the auditorium. They're going to tear down the auditorium and the cafeteria. Yeah. 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 And I would say that, that that probably comes with it a couple of million yeah, worth of were um, tear down and, and, and to two million dollars. Whereas down. if we were to retain them, that would possibly help lower the cost, you know, um, because one of the things that the superintendent had um, said is that those shops, he would love to be able to reopen for adult education, things right. that, you know, that Diamond doesn't offer, basically, you right. know, and uh, and that's one of the things that we don't have night school anymore for, for adults in town who wish to pursue their high school diploma. Uh, we used to. Um, I have several family members that utilize that program in order to get their high school diploma um, because they had to work full time and they couldn't they couldn't continue on days going to school. Um, so there's a lot of it. You know, you you can combine this with with education also. Um, there's a lot of potential, but we have to have you know we first have to un know from town meeting whether or not the town has the stomach to go forward with this. And unfortunately, that's, you know, four months away, and we're budgeting right now, you know. Um, so budget-wise, I mean, regardless of what we do, I think we need to fund the school for another year. Yeah. And even if we put it on the market, we're not going to sell it in three months. Hmm. So no. I mean, we have to fund it for another year. So have you included even... that in your budget? Yeah. Okay. 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 We may need to do a Warren article uh, to cover some of the expenses. We have 125,000 in there in the budget. Last year we did a warrant article for 200,000. We're still getting the numbers to see how much of that is left. Okay. okay. But yes, we will include it in the budget. Okay. Um, so the, the wording that you have here would be on the warrant article. <coughs> I guess my only question is should you put an estimated cost in there? I think we can. 
we could put it in there, um, uh, but I think it's better that it goes in the explanation so they can understand what the alternative costing is. And, and the chart that you had prepared that we have here, let me just get it just had fun right here. Yeah. Um, which gives the you know a couple of different scenarios. I think we could um, we can include something like that in the explanation. But I, I would say not to just to keep it as simple as possible, not conflate the article with all the numbers and, uh, and then we can speak to that on town meeting floor to look, it would cost this to cost approximately 24 million to renovate what we currently have. 30 million could have everything brand new, you know. Um, and we wouldn't displace people. We wouldn't have to find alternative housing for these, you know, offices and whatnot while that construction was going on. It also would be more centrally located. It would also take all of the departments that are dispersed all over town, the library, the Council on Aging, the, um, you know, even Veterans Affairs, and the, the, you know, the building department and all of that, and the town departments are all in different buildings. And I mean, I, I don't know about, I, I do construction, and that involves permits. And some there are times when I, I've had to go, and other towns, I, it's all in one building. You know, you, you go to all the departments. I've, I've had to go to three different buildings to get stamps and certifications and things notarized and whatnot. And you know, having that all in one building, um, there's an economy of scale. You know, it's it, it's when you have everything centrally located. You don't have to heat five different buildings. You heat one building. You know, you don't have to maintain five different buildings. You maintain one building. You know, uh, there's a lot of things. You don't have to go back and forth, or you don't have to send, uh, you know, uh, staff from one building to another, from one building to another. Um, it's all in one building. So, I mean. So, what, are we good with this wording here for the article? The explanation. I, think I you know what? Need to work on a little bit for the article. Yeah, the explanation. I totally have to work on some more. Uh, and I know we have to add, so, and I, I already have, like I said, added in about the fields and things like that um, in my next draft. Roughly $14 million to renovate the existing building. So do we just need to confirm those numbers. I, I might be off, but just double check. I'm not sure if it's... I thought it was 24 for some reason. <coughs> yeah, I, I thought okay. from the... Um, I, then I, I was, and, and I was again, just a, and these numbers, these numbers are changing every day. Correct. Yeah, but we're comparing the numbers across the board. So we're using the same square foot footage cost for the high school as we have for these other buildings or similar. Yeah. So if those go up, these will go up. So it should be a, a fair comparison. Right. Yeah. Reasonable comparison. Right. Yeah. And, and one of the <laughs> things I, that I, I, and I'll change that 24 to 14 or 15 or whatever it was. Um, but one of the things that I try to stress in there is that, you know, even if we do spend $14 million renovating these buildings, they're still not going to be up to energy codes. They're not going to be up to proper fire codes. They're not, you know, you're not going to be up to all those codes. Um, you're not going to have a sprinkler system. Obviously, they're not going to force you to put that in, so we wouldn't put that in. Um, whereas this building, if we were to reuse it, it would have to be up to all those codes. Uh, 80, and it would be ADA compliant. It's way more ADA compliant already because uh, it has ramps and things that are very low that you can get into and out of. It has elevators. It has all the things um, that would make it more ADA compliant. Um, and it has more space. And it has more space than we need, so it's an opportunity for the town to make money on rentals, whether that be affordable housing units or um, private office space or whatever, it's, 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 it's an opportunity for the town to get some income out of the building. Um, there's gym rentals, auditorium rentals, function rentals, all those things, um, and, and help pay for it, you know. So those are the things <coughs> I, f I felt we should, you know, really focus on in our explanation to town meeting. And, and the fact that, you know, we lose the fields we have to build fields, so that's going to be a so, cost. Yeah, you know? So that, that option is not listed under option A, the reconstruction of new fields. So um, I think we would have to add that. Yeah, the new fields are under option any of A, these. Under option A, selling the school, yeah. we would have to include a figure. Um, I know the very preliminary figures for the renovation at the campground, for example, 
five six million dollars. Yeah, is yeah. what the yeah to build the to build the fields. Right. Yeah. Right. And so the way that, that should be included in yeah. option A. Yeah. And then um, and then there's the displacement of the town offices mm -hmm. while you're doing that. We don't. I mean, so it was it so was what's displacement. If, just a thought <coughs> is if if you built an addition to this place. And this group moves into the addition, and then you rehab this part. Costs a little bit more, but yeah, we might be able to work. But that wasn't building an addition wasn't included in this. This is just renovating. Believe. This is just renovating. Renovating the building. Just renovating itself. the existing buildings and not right. building any additions onto them. We're going to renovate both, right? So we're renovating the town hall and the annex. So if you took yep. the four and a half million dollars that you're putting into the annex because it's a bigger building, and put it here, it may not be that much different. So yeah. It's a lot of money no matter what we do. Let's stick on a pig. Yeah. Yeah, but let me just say something here. Um, it, because I think we should be prepared for the fact that, 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 or for the reaction. I think there's going to be a lot of people who may feel, and this is just my own opinion, but I, you know, based on the reactions of talking to some other folks in town, that uh, there's a, I think there's, to a certain degree, there's a strong sentiment that we don't want to see the town offices moved out of Central Village. Uh, they like the idea, the cohesiveness of having, a, you know, a retail area and a you know, municipal office commercial uses in this village, this Central Village. And so how do you do that? Well, to really, and, and as we were just saying, you've got costs to renovate the building you're in, you're sitting in, and you've got costs to renovate the annex. But I think, I think the more sensible approach would be, if you were going to go that route, is to, as Jim was just saying, build an addition large enough to accommodate all of the offices that are in the, currently in the annex. And plus expansion space, and then you renovate the, uh, the inside of your bu the building you're sitting in, so that in the end of the day, you have all the offices under one roof. Because I think I agree, Brian, that makes so much more sense than having them split up the uh, building department in one building and the uh, assessors in another building, that kind of thing that we have now. So consolidating all under one roof is definitely an advantage. The question is, is it better to do it in the old high school by moving there or to uh, to work with the buildings that we had to the existing town hall? And yeah, there is a bit of a logistics issue of what you do with people um, and, and at some additional cost if you have to move everyone out of the town hall temporarily. Uh, they could move to the old high school temporarily. I don't know what the cost would be, but if they move there for a period of a year, 18 months, whatever, and then move back into a renovated town hall, the addition is built and the annex moves in there. And then you have the annex that's available to, I mean, that would make a much better, uh, in my own opinion, uh, cultural center where it has the theater and they can have arts and music and, and they have the playground in the back. So, uh, and then again, you're keeping all of those things within our, our central village. We really make, build a kind of a strong nucleus rather than getting spread out and moving this big group of functions, the town offices, senior center, the library, uh, school, all of, and the Westport Cultural Center moving them all up to the high school. I know there are other, I mean, this is a very, <laughs> there are a lot of pros and cons, and I see them all. There, there are, and, and again, there's a lot of people also that are going to have the equal, um, you know, desire to not divest ourselves of the high school because they have a lot of memories there, and it is a community like it's a place where a lot of the community would come together especially for you know graduation sports events different you know different large events like that you know when the high school kids are doing you know drama club does a play the band or the band has a, a performance you know 
it's all, the, all these are all ingrained in the memories of many native West Borders. So I think that's going to play in part of it also. Uh, just as much, I think, as people who don't want to see Town Hall moved from Central Village. Um, but, you know, the one thing they don't mention about Central Village is it's actually not centrally located as far as the population of the town is concerned. It's kind of more in the south end of town, and it's a lot further away uh, for people who live in the north end, um, that, whereas the high school is pretty close. Um, so, I mean, literally, like 177 pretty much is that Mason-Dixon line, and it's right near there. So, um, there's, there's that part of it that, you know, makes it more convenient for a lot of the people in the north end, and it's a little closer. Go ahead, William. I'd just like to make a comment. We've, we've talked about this many times. The town hall is inadequate and it is not easily added on to it. We've had all sorts of problems with the roof. I was involved in that. Mm -hmm. uh, we put the elevator on the end, but that place just doesn't give us room. You haven't even thought about the problems that we've got in back of the town hall. We've got a building there that's falling down on the ground. Yep. Now, as far as the Earl School is concerned, that's the, that's the kind of building that was a beautiful building around 1900. Yep. Um, it's it's not something that well uh, that lends itself well, and we start putting additions onto these places. You've got to change what you've got already, which is not going to be easy. Now I keep hearing about the old high school as is being kind of old and, <laughs> and not adequate. That's not true at all. It's one of the best buildings that we've got in town. As a matter of fact, I mean the auditorium. Look at the size of it. We have a gym. We have a great place for for having. Uh, eating facilities which would lend itself well to you know other things that we might want to do i think to give up on the old high school in any way would be wrong now that's just my opinion um i hear about all these 24 million and 15 million and 10 million and so on and as i've said before and i say this tongue-in-cheek because i'm joking to a certain extent when we when we did the Earl school we said uh, grab your bag and, and walk over to the to the Earl School with you because that's where you're going to be from now on. That's how we renovated that place. And then we said, oh, well, we need to have some way to get up to this second floor, so we put in a chair lift. And I mean, it, you know, then we needed a bathroom, we put in that. that. That's just not something that 50 years from now that we're going to say, hey, this is still operable, and with a few changes, we're in business. I'm not going to be here 50 years from now. I don't know about you folks. I know I'm not going to be. But the whole point is that there are going to be a whole town full of people there. And that that particular area has a lot of space, a lot of place to build on. I mean, you could put additions on the old high school a lot easier than you could put additions on the town hall. I fooled around with the roof there. And as you know, Jim, uh, and the same thing with the old high school. The old high school has a brand new roof on it. You know that. We sat on, we sat on those committees. And it was designed to take a solar array, which is another, you know, plus to that. It's that, that building, when they redid that roof, they uh, they beefed it up so that it could take a full solar array. So. so so, I think I was kind of in the minority in my opinion with this, but the committee has kind of decided in the past that they want to try and keep it and mm -hmm. put it out to the voters. So uh, I yeah. think it's, it's the wording that we have to look at. My only recommendation with the wording of the article is that we should also at least leave the option open that um, the high school gets torn down and a new building gets built because we may very well find that it's about the same amount of money to tear that place down and, and build something specific for the uses that we're looking for. Um, in, yeah, because I, I think once you get into it and you start looking at municipal uses, you got one elevator in there and that entire building. Uh, and it's not really located in a great place even to get to that front door. I thought there were two. I thought there was one by the gym. No, I don't believe so. I believe it's just that one. Okay. I could be right. Um, yeah, There's sure. a ramp. There's a ramp down there. Um, and it, it's, it's still a school, right? So yep. um, you can modify it. They've done it in many communities, mostly in older buildings, um, but you can do it. But I think once you start getting into the numbers, they may look at it and say, listen, you might be better off just tearing this place down and building something that you need, and it's going to be about the same amount of money. And, and that may be... You know, so I just leave that option open in the wording. If, uh, 
you know, not just reuse or reuse or the rebuild or something, you know, reuse the building or property. Okay. I, I can. Uh, I can certainly rework. How, when, what's the deadline for the? I think we'll look at the end of the. We got a few weeks. Yeah, and also um, we can le be left a placeholder. Sort of place we don't have yeah. to have the wording perfect, but all right, I'll work on that. Then I'll, I'll definitely add that to it. Um, uh, I already did add stuff about the fields and losing those, which wasn't in this original explanation. Um, is there anything else? If there's anything else actually that you feel should be added to it, um, and that you don't think of now or whatever, uh, just email me and I'll add it to my um, email me individually <laughs> what you feel I should add to that explanation, and I will add it to it and bring it to the next meeting. We can go, you know, we can go through it. Hopefully, we'll be able to have a few more members. Uh, here for that, um, so that we can get a little, uh, a little broader. Um, go ahead, Mark. Yeah, well, Brian. So just the other thing to think about, it, or maybe putting something in to answer the question about if if we do move out of the town hall in the annex, what what would be would come of those buildings, or what are the possibilities? Well, one and of the things to, we've to heard. Their advantage is that they, to their advantage, they're in a, they're in a, um, a business district, so that opens up you know, some possibilities for their reuse or sale. I don't know. We well, would be it'd be difficult to sell them, um, just because they've received CPA money and that for yeah. historic preservation, so that might present a problem. It would be more that we would probably be able to lease them out. Um, and which again, commercial leases these days, they, you know, that's a lot of money. So people, you know, people pay a lot for a centrally located uh, office space in a, in a village like this. So um, that again may be an opportunity for the town to actually recoup some of our losses, uh, uh, you know. But uh, any of that can, uh, you know, if, if we're going to go with an addition to this, you know, as a possible alternative, I mean, I, I think we need to have some concrete numbers on how big that addition needs to be in order to house everything and what, it, what that would cost. I mean, right now we're looking at, what is it, about 550 per square foot for new? Yeah, yeah close. Okay. So we probably need, I mean, what is this building altogether? About eight, 9,000? So this one was about four million dollars in the, the annex. A little bit. No, 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 no. Square minutes. footage wise, how big is this one? It's seventy-eight hundred. Seventy-eight hundred. Seventy yeah. hundred. And the annex is eighty-seven hundred. Eighty-seven hundred. So, so sixteen together, sixteen and a half thousand square feet. Yeah, and they're not big yeah. enough. And we the don't the have enough room. a lot of wasted space in that building. Where in the annex? In the annex. Yeah, yeah, because that's high ceilings and it was. I see a big hallways. Big hallways, yeah, high ceilings, things like that. Yeah, um, which the high school also has, but uh, you know those could be divided up, you know, a lot smaller. Um, but so we're looking at we have about sixteen thousand, seventeen thousand square feet. We probably need twenty to house everything right now, with no expansion, you know, uh, that we have. And I think we were looking at what they said, we would need about 35 of the high school um, to house everything. And then the, the, and it wouldn't meet, meet the, we wouldn't be taking up all of the space. We would, we'd only, I think we, if we kept the high school the way it is, I think with all the town offices, I think it was somewhere around 40 or 45 percent we would be we would fill if we put all the town offices there and then the rest would be uh, for other options I do believe I, I know it was somewhere around that 40 to 45 percent or so we would occupy with that's the space we would need I think is what the study said yeah something like, something around, around that yeah so we we would have almost 60 percent of that building that could have other uses which could you know help us to get grant money or um, rent out to help offset the cost, you know, so 
I mean, I know no, I, I know it's not easy. I know it's not. It would be a long road. Again, uh, floating the article, I think, is the first step, and then after that, we see where where that goes. Go ahead, Bill. Bill. Oh. Go ahead. No provision for the superintendent. Don't forget that now. Yeah. No. I, the whole top four of the town hall, if you yeah. decided to move them there. And that's another thing I have already added into the the explanation of, is about the school administration buildings. But I did I did talk about that they had already they already had a plan to go somewhere else uh, should we sell or or, um, or or renovate the building. So they they've already. Uh, the superintendent already has a contingency plan in place. He informed me of it anyway. Um, he didn't tell me what it was, but he said he has a contingency plan. Um, so that would be the only one that would actually be displaced temporarily um, if we did reconstruct the building. So just a couple of points. Um, there's no great answer. No. You know, if, if we sell a high school, this is a downside to that. If we sell Town Hall down here, or the annex is going to be a downside to that as well. Yep. There's no perfect answer. No. Um, I will say that it's difficult. We don't have the resources to manage property. No. You know, we have an oil tank problem over at the town farm, and that, there's nobody. There's nobody to manage it. There's nobody to, to get it resolved. Luckily, the highway department was able to do some of the work, and we were able to get the time done to get it done. But you know. And, and the other thing you're going to need with this type of project is you're going to need a champion, right? You're going to need somebody to champion this project through. Yep. Whether that's this committee or another committee, you need somebody that has a vested interest in really making this work. And uh, otherwise, well, I'm 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 going to be calling out the cavalry soon. Okay. So I have several people who have contacted me that want to get involved, and so um, we'll I will, you know, I that'd be good. Really wanted to get to the point where. We kind of have a good idea of what we want to do, and I think we do. I think we have a good idea of what we would like to see it become. And I have several people that I think may take that ball and run with it, and, um, and, and uh, that have contacted me already. Um, <coughs> some of which you, I'm sure you know very well. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, I think the more more information we can provide the in in this question or the as background the better educated uh, a vote we'll get yep. and uh, so you know making people aware that there are issues but they can be overcome such as rezoning I mean, there are major questions about reason issues to, the building would have to be rezoned and a mixed-use building require anything other than educational use requires for that Existing old high school means quite a bit of uh, alterations just to meet codes for those different uses. But uh, well, we but could, all that it, it, you know, it's not it's not insurmountable. No, and and we could create an overlay district like we did for um, Nokachoke. for Nokachoke and like yeah. we did for the uh, uh, the technology district up in uh, um, North End. So it's not. That that's things. Those are fairly doable as far as obstacles. You know, those those are surmountable. Um, you know, the biggest obstacle is going to be the money. Honestly and truly, I think the biggest obstacle is going to be the money. The next biggest obstacle is going to be people's sentimental attachments to other buildings or this building. You know, I think those are going to be the the two biggest driving forces that we have to have an answer for. And, uh, and, and I mean, as that's why you know, I'm trying to get it all into the explanation because you can give this to as a handout at the meeting, and people will get a better understanding before they go in uh, while they're there and looking at it and say, okay, they can formulate their arguments for or against whatever, um, but at least they have an understanding of what we've been through. And uh, and I and I will include that. Um, I kind of put it toward the end, but I but I'll I w I'll bring that to the forefront of the explanation that this is the work of the long term building committee, and that we we have been looking at this for a while, and you know these are our 
our thoughts and this is where we are advising the town to go on this um, whether or not they go in that direction that's not up to us that's up to them uh, we just have to present the best argument we can at town meeting as to why they should support this or not depending on how you feel about it so, so at this point we don't have a quorum yep we don't so um, we can discuss it we just can't take any yeah. action on it we can't take any action. So what, I'll, what we'll do, we'll try to get another meeting. Uh, I'm going to be gone for three weeks. So I will be back probably on the 25th or 26th of February. So maybe the week after that, uh, we can have another meeting. And in the meantime, I will work on this and try to get it closer to a finished Draft. Like I said, if any any of you feel there's any points I missed in this one, um, please uh, just email me individually uh, what any points you think you should I should add, and then we'll uh, I'll I'll send back a um, a more finished draft uh, before the next meeting for you to look at, and then just bring your edits to the meeting. Uh, okay. One other thought I had is uh, should we on the town website, perhaps, make available via various links to all the, the, the studies, studies that yes. we've done recently. I think we they, did. They are on there. They're I on think they are. Committee there uh, somewhere. Well, I looked for them. The other, what are they under? Long-term building committee. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, they should well, be there. Make people aware that that's where to go. Yep. Yep. We can add a link to the, the front page. And has it got the uh, the assessments that were done at the building back at the, you know, the uh, structural report, hazardous materials report? Yep, yep, yep. And I'll double check to make sure. Yeah, it was very, there was very little for hazardous because a lot of it has already been abated, right. I do believe, or encapsulated. So I think I, they have like 1.5 million estimate to clean the rest of it out. Yeah. Uh, which, that may have been part of the demolition. I I, yeah, I think that was part of it. But, um, yeah, because they we had everything tested back in 2011 when it started all this madness with the middle school because uh, we got part of a green uh, grant for from the Mass School Building Authority, uh, green buildings or whatever grant money we got to replace that roof and insulate it properly and make it structurally sound so it could handle an array. Um, and part of that was also we were going to replace all the windows and doors that were still single pane um, and in both buildings, but they had to test the caulk beforehand because they had been coming up and finding out that a lot of these old buildings that were built in the 60s and 70s had the PCB in the caulk, and that's what started the whole um, you know, domino effect where we, had, we ended up having to tear down the middle school so so when do you want comments back by me you're going away for three weeks i'll be gone weeks. for three so anytime during that and i'll i'll, I'll try to it's, and let's try to go maybe the first week in march okay. if we can let me look at my calendar here hold on So yeah, maybe March first, Wednesday, March first, if we could. Okay. We'll yeah, that, that works for me. Does that work for you, Bill? Yeah. Okay. Fine. All right. So we'll go. We'll, we'll schedule that for Wednesday, March first, barring any you know serious issues. Um, and I'll try to have a much more finished uh, draft of this for you. Um, we'll, it just you had mentioned a couple of things about things to put in the article itself. So if you could you just okay. email those, yep. email those. Yeah. and no, uh, we did have some comments from Martin, Bob Daly that we can get around to everybody. Just uh, okay, and it you know maybe it's worth the planning board taking a look at to see the zoning and what uses they might. Yeah, well, currently it's zoned for residential, um, residential agriculture and residential. Yeah, I do believe, and then the school obviously is grandfathered. As a grandfathered use, so I don't think it's zone for. I don't think we have a zone it's for schools. Yeah, it's exempt. Yeah, it's exempt. yeah. Okay. educational uses. Yeah. 
So, so currently it's a zone for agricultural um, and uh, uh, um, depending residential. On who, depending on who you talk to, sometimes the municipal uses are exempt as well. It kind of goes back and forth. So. Well, the town could always, again, create an overlay district so that it could be business, mixed use business, uh, residential and commercial. So uh, we could do that certainly and, and, and even just do it for that property if we didn't want it to be that whole area, you know, just because there's a lot of residences there um, that surround it. So you wouldn't want to disrupt them too much, you know, it's, uh, it's not going to, I don't think having town offices would be any more disruptive than having the school there. I think residents who live there now are very glad that the school's not there anymore. They don't have to deal with the buses twice a day where you can't, where the road's impassable twice a day, you know? Um, so, uh, All right. I, so I think, that's yeah, it. That, I think that's just about it. We don't have anything under 48 hours. We don't have anything other. Any, anybody have anything else? Well, so, so to get back to what I said in the beginning, do you think we should, uh, is it worth submitting a, an expression of interest for this uh, community one-stop funding for a grant? Because if this, for some, you know, if there was traction on this idea, well, I still think we need further, we, we need to take it further in terms of in-depth. My thoughts on that are I, 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 I don't see how it could possibly hurt to uh, apply for or express interest in it. Um, and then when we have an, a vote, we have a selectman meeting in yeah, two the, weeks. This, this first step is fairly simple. It's not a lengthy application. Yeah. It's a one page or two page. Um, so let's say we should go forward with that and then at our next select, and, uh, select board meeting, then we could maybe, uh, you know, uh, bring it a, a, in front of the board to pursue the grant. Further. So they'll file the expression of interest and then take it back to the town like a month or six weeks. Yep. And kind of point out some areas that should be improved or, or different funding sources that you can apply for. And I think at that point, it be around March 1st so we can discuss it then. Yeah, hopefully. You know, if we can discuss it then, we discuss it then. If not, then we can, uh, we could, you know, postpone our meeting a, a week or two. It's not a big deal. And like I said, um, uh, I think in the meantime, we'll put a placeholder on with the board of selectmen. Yep, for, yeah. the, uh, for an ATM for an ATM article. Um, I think they're, they're pretty much already aware that we were going to do this. And yeah, I was going to charge me, charge me with writing it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you know, I, was, I, was, I was trying, you know. Um, but I'll work on this more, uh, and and I'll get uh, I'll get it refined a little better and refine the language and whatnot. Um, and include the things that, you know, again, if you have anything you would like for me to include, just email me um, and I will include it in it. And um, then a week or so before the next meeting, I'll send out my current draft status uh, for you all to peruse and then bring your edits to the meeting. And we'll, uh, we'll do, we'll get it, you know, down to kind of a final uh, look. And, uh, and final wording. So, okay. Any other business? Which, oh, which email address do you prefer, Brian? Uh, send it to the Valcorp Builder one. I finally did get my B Vault one up and running, and I had a okay. I had to download new uh, updates and whatnot for to my uh, to my mail. And on my I had to do it on my phone, my computer, and my iPad, and then finally everything worked again. It was it was but it was like six months of hell. Couldn't get my emails. Couldn't I had to go remotely to the charter website to get to actually get my emails. I couldn't just open my mail and get get my emails. It was a nightmare. Um, but I, it seems to be all up and working again. But yeah, the Valcar Builder one uh, I get a lot less junk mail on that one because it's not as old. So um, send it to that one. Was that Valcor Builder at gmail.com? At gmail. .com. At gmail.com. Gmail yep. Thank you. All in all lowercase. Okay. All right. Motion. Well, we can't motion because we're going to adjourn the meeting now uh, because uh, we don't have a quorum. So, uh, so. So thank you. So thank you all for coming, and we will see you on the first.